In this video, I'm going to go over how to identify members of order Lagomorpha. So this is the pika's haired rabbits. Okay. So first, to identify that it is a lagomorph and not say a rodent or a carnivore or whatever else, there are a couple of things we want to look at. So first of all, we have a fenestrated skull. So fenestra means hole. Comes from the word for window. So if you look at the side of this skull, you see all these kind of holes and weird things going on. Hold up another one. You see it's similar. And then the pica uh, also has that too. So the fenestrated skull is going to be a lagomorph and say not a rodent. By the way, fenestra meaning window. Defenestrate is to throw someone out of a window. Great word if you ever need to use it. Anyway, moving on. Another thing is two pairs of incisors. So for all the rodents we looked at, they had one big massive pair of incisors. If you look at a rabbit or a hare, we see one big pair in front. But then if you look behind, you see a second smaller pair. So this big single pair with a small pair behind, all of the lagomorphs have that. And that's probably the most obvious way to know that it is lagomorph and not a rodent. Another thing that lagomorphs have that rodents also have, and everything we'll look at today will have, is a diastema. So it has this gap between the front teeth and the cheek teeth. We've seen that before with the rodents. We'll see it with the other herbivores. So that is less useful, but still something worth noting if you say find this in the wild, then it gives you an idea of where to start. All right, so we have two families within order Lagomorpha. We have Ocotonidae, the pikas, and Laporidae, the hares and rabbits. Within uh, Ocotona today, we only have one species here in Montana, Ocotona princeps, that's our pica. There are a few differences between the pica and the hares and rabbits. One, five cheek teeth versus six cheek teeth. Uh, I won't tell the skull, you can look for yourself. It should be um, relatively straightforward to actually see which, how many cheek teeth there are. The other thing is hares and rabbits have this thing that we call a supraorbital process. So it's not the post-orbital process because it's not behind the orbit, it's supraorbital because it's above the orbit. And so we see these kind of wing things off to the sides. Hares and rabbits have that, those, depending on the skull specimen, one or two of them might have been broken off. But we'll give you good examples that have at least one of these. If we look at the pica, from the top, we don't see that super orbital process. So this is a top-down view of that pica skull. But then the other thing, while we're here, that you do see is this sticking out right here. So the key describes that as a, quote, marker backward extension of the jugal also known as the zygomatic. So this sticking out way back to the side, that is unique to pikas and not seen in the other lagomorphs. Really not seen in any other skulls that I can think of right now. So that's our pica. You also need to know the pica skin. So I'm sure a lot of you have seen pikas while hiking, you've seen them up the top of mountains. Um, don't know how to describe it so much. It's brown, it's small, it's cute. It has round ears, not the long ears of a rabbit. It has similarly sized front and hind feet, and the tail is almost gone. You can barely see it. So um, don't get this confused with any, say, rodents. This is a pika. I look at the face and it just looks like a cute little pica face. 
Fin Laporte, so we've talked about how to know that it is a hare rabbit, then to know if it is a hare or a rabbit. For the skulls, we're going to look at the interparietal bone. So, if we look at the hare, when we look at the back of the skull, you can see, um, let me get this pointer, this right here that's outlined is the interparietal bone, but if you look at a rabbit, you don't see that. It is fused with the parietal bones. So seeing that kind of extra outlined bone on one but not the other. If you see that distinct interparietal bone, it is one of our rabbits. If it's fused with parietal, it's one of the hairs. So then, for the rabbits, we have Brachiolagus idahoensis, the pygmy rabbit, and Silvolagus, the cottontails. We have three species of cottontail in Montana, but the skins are practically impossible to tell apart, and the skulls are practically impossible to tell apart. So we're just going to focus on the genus Silvolagus and not worry about the species. But if you're curious, Silvolagus nutali is the one that we have around um, Missoula. So to tell these two apart, we need to look at the first upper cheek tooth. So if you look at the front face of the tooth, you see a number of grooves. And if you, we'll try to get a good picture of this. I don't know if we'll come in the video. But if you kind of look at this angle, you can see a few grooves on the kind of silhouette of the first upper cheek tooth. So for Silolagus, it has three reentrant angles or three little indentations versus Brachiolagus, I don't know if I'll be able to get a good angle, but you only see one little indentation. Uh, this is kind of hard to show like this. Like we should be posting videos at an angle Sorry, posting photos online at an angle where you are able to actually see these things. Right. Then as far as uh, skins, we don't have any skins available for the pinging rabbit, so don't worry about that. And I'll mention the Silvolagus skins when I'm comparing it to the other hair skins. Okay. So, let's say that we know that it's genus Lepus, it is a hare slash jackrabbits. For the skulls, it comes down to size. We have Lepus americanus. So, we have Lepus americanus in this hand. We have Lepus californicus in this hand. You can see that Lepus um, americanus is smaller. Um, and specifically, the O and L is less than 75 uh, millimeters. We have not mentioned the O and L before. This is the occipital nasal length. It is the description in your key. So, um, let's see, occipital nasal length from the front of the nasal bone to the occipital condyles. So for um, CDL, we go to the back of these condyles. Here we're going there. So back of there to the tip of the nasal bones. In this case, we're getting about 70 millimeters, which is less than 75. It's a smaller skull. This is Lepus americanus. For the other two Lepus, the skulls are indistinguishable. So if we gave you one of these skulls and you figured out that it's a live morph, you figured out that it's a hare, you figured out it's too big to be Lepus americanus, all you know is that it's a jackrabbit, but you don't know which one. So you could just put Lepus sp, meaning some species in Lepus. Now for coats, hair, uh, 
for pellets. Mostly, we want to look at the tail, and also let's talk about winter changing. So Lepis americanus, the snowshoe hare, changes its coat in winter, and you're probably aware of that. Lepis townsendi, the white-tailed jackrabbit, also changes its coat in the winter. So if you have a winter coat, you can't exactly know which is which. You might be able to know depending on where you are because of the habitat. But one thing we're going to look at is the ears, which are smaller in Lepis americanus, less than 90 millimeters than in the jackrabbits, which is greater than 90 millimeters. These are the types of numbers that we would give you because we would give you a skin and then a list of measurements. So you'd have to know which one is the ear and then how big is it. That's if the coats are white. During the summer, then all of these species are kind of browner, blacker, grayish. So then we want to look at the tail. Silvalagus, the cotton tail, has this white underneath of the tail, hence cotton tail, and brown above. All three species of Civilagus look similar to that, so we won't worry identifying to species level. For our Lepis americanus, it has an entirely brownish gray, black tail in the summer, which then turns white in the winter. Lepis townsendi has an entirely white tail, which I can't get a great view of. <laughs> Looks like it fell off. An entirely white tail. Lepis californicus, the black-tailed jackrabbit, has this black tail, a little lighter underneath, but not like white cotton tail bright. So that should cover all of our lab tails.